What's going on guys? The NBA trade deadline was today and it was possibly the most active trade deadline it's been in years with tons of moves, not a lot of like blockbuster moves, um, but of course the big news of the day is a blockbuster trade. The Nets and Sixers finally do it. They finally complete the swap that's been talked about for Almost a year, basically since last year's playoffs ended for the 76ers, and that is Ben Simmons going to the Brooklyn Nets in exchange for James Harden. Uh, it's a lot more than that, so here's what actually ended up happening. Uh, Brooklyn gets Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, and two, 20, or two future first-round picks. And Philadelphia gets James Harden and Paul Millsap which he hasn't played in a long time. He's been disgruntled in Brooklyn. I don't know if they're planning on keeping him or if he's someone that's going to just hit the buyout market. But at first glance, this feels like a huge overpay for Philly. I, I can't get past in my head that Ben Simmons is like 25 years old and has four or five years left on his contract. So like to me, he's the most valuable piece. I know he hasn't played, and I know the last time we saw him play, it was a it was a pretty colossal meltdown that kind of kicked all of this into motion. But still, like to me, looking at everything and looking especially at the season that, that James Harden has had so far with injuries and underperforming and just looking just like unathletic and lackadaisical, it seems weird to me that that Philly would have to put in more to get him. Especially if he was telling management, hey, I'm not re-signing this, this summer, get rid of me, I want out of here, I want out of here, as is being reported. But, I mean, we'll never know about that. But the more I think about it, the more I understand it. Uh, for the Brooklyn side of things, they are a clear winner for me uh, because this trade gets them kind of everything they need as a team. So Ben Simmons can be a primary facilitator. He can be a strong defender, one through five. He gives them defensive flexibility both on the perimeter and in the paint um, with that versatility and his size. And he adds that extra facilitator um, when, you know, you want to put Kyrie off ball or if he can't play in games or if Kyrie just can't play. So the scoring limits with Ben Simmons don't impact the team as much because, you know, Brooklyn's constructed to be a little bit more of a, okay, we have multiple guys that can get their own shots, like, don't worry about it. We can create and get our own shots. Like Kevin Durant, and you add Seth Curry, who's going to you know, continue to feast on open looks, especially when you have this Nets team back at, at full health. And then Andre Drummond, um, you know, he was doing good in Philly. He, he has a role. He knows how to do it well. He's a, he's a rebounding machine. So I understand that too. And it, it really, like checks all the boxes for Brooklyn and it gets them back a couple picks that they had given up in the first place for the Harden trade. So all in all, it feels like the, the Nets were able to really, you know, extract every last drop of value they could out of this deal. Whereas with Philly, it feels like an overpay. Like, I don't, if you're getting two picks, then I would have argued you don't get Seth Curry. Like, if you're giving up picks, then don't put in your best shooter who has the best chemistry with your best player. And to me, it's a huge risk. This this Sixers team has been good all year. Embiid is probably the MVP if the season ended right now. And, you know, this is a huge chemistry experiment, throwing James Harden in and disrupting the chemistry of the team like that. But you're taking a player who hasn't played at all in Ben Simmons and who probably was not coming back. And you're turning him into a top 20 player in the league, assuming everything goes well. It's a huge risk. James is eligible for an extension this summer. He's going to want a lot of money. Daryl Morey is probably going to give him a lot of money. And in two years, if this goes bad and Joel Embiid is subtweeting James Harden, Daryl Morey is going to get fired. <laughs> like, this is the kind of move that absolutely gets you fired because... You're giving up a lot to bring him in. And the idea is you want to maximize that window with Embiid playing at this level. You never know. With injuries, with bad luck, with whatever. You never know. So I understand it from Philly's side. I think they overpaid a little bit. I think the fact that they're keeping um, Matisse Seibel is a huge win for them. 
So you get the offensive upgrade. Uh, someone I was talking to said, think of it as, as they're just basically upgrading Seth Curry to James Harden because it's not like they were getting anything from Ben Simmons anymore anyways, which I guess is a good way to look at it. I don't know if that's a if that's a perspective thing. Like, of course, Sixers fans are going to say that and maybe Nets fans are going to say we fleeced you. And then, you know, it could just be that. But I'm really curious to see what Embiid and Harden look like together because... Embiid is kind of a more like back you down, punish you, get to the basket than he is like a rim running big man. And Harden needs to just step back into that facilitator role and hopefully he can kind of find a good blend of the the offensive aggression from his Houston days with the willingness to facilitate that he had those first couple months in the Nets. But it's going to be really interesting to see. I want to see who steps in as the the open three taker for them with Seth Curry gone. I want to see, you know, how the how the scoring gets divvied up. I want to see if Tobias Harris continues to to trend upwards after his disastrous start to the year. Um and then on the Brooklyn side, I just want to see what Ben Simmons looks like. I want to see if he's done anything to to improve or expand on his game or if they're just trading for exactly what Philly had with him uh, last year, like it, and it, I'd say that, and it sounds bad, but it, I don't mean it that way because he was a all defensive player. He was a top, he was an all star. He was a top talent. So even if that's what they're getting, then he fills a lot of needs for them right away. This is a risk for Philly. It's a lot to give up. It's a slam dunk for the Nets, who you know gave up a lot to get James Harden but recoup some of it and some of the stuff they recoup, even as good as as Karis LeVert and Jared Allen especially have looked since leaving Brooklyn. You know, these pieces are going to fit. The rookies that the Nets have have been contributing huge, and Ben Simmons adding to that is just going to shore up the defense and the playmaking, which are two spots that they absolutely needed the most help. KD is going to need help in the playoffs. He's not going to be able to just go and defend the best player on the other team and then also come back and score 50. Well, he might be able to do that because that man is a robot that just eats, sleeps, and breathes basketball. But I think this is a, a win-win for both teams after really thinking about it. Um, can't really say one team won and one team lost. I think, um, if anything, Philly overpaid a bit, but I understand why they did it. And this is really, this is one of those trades that we're going to see what happens and feel the ripple effects. I guess the losers, if anything, are the the Nets fans that bought the James Harden Nets jerseys because he was there almost less than a calendar year. Like, that's crazy to me that it would go from from so good to so bad so fast and I guess you know the stuff with Kyrie Katie's injuries maybe it all exacerbated it but it's tough it's a tough world out there in the NBA and Harden is gonna have to be on his best behavior now he reteams with Daryl Morey who for whatever reason they just there I don't think there's a better NBA love story than maybe uh Bobby and Toby but It's going to really, James Harden is going to have a lot to prove. He's going to have to really be on his best behavior, for lack of a better phrase, and he's going to have to absolutely elevate everyone every time he's on the court. Or it's going to look like here's someone who has twice in one year forced his way out of like good basketball situations to get what he wants, to then force his way out again to get what he wants. And if he doesn't put in that effort and they don't, we, like the Philly media is ruthless. Like I'll, I'll be really curious to see what happens. He's been out with a, a hamstring tightness, so we'll see when he comes back and what he looks like right away. And then Ben Simmons, they said it's a couple weeks probably that he needs to get back into basketball conditioning and and ramp up his activities, which I would kind of hope he's been doing this whole time anyways. But that's another story. Um, and then it looks like they're kind of going to be gearing up to bring him back to start trying to integrate him into the playoffs. So it wouldn't surprise me if KD starts to come back around the same time, just so they can get everyone out and just try to, to build and build that momentum. Um, and if things keep going as bad as they've gone, the Nets have lost like 10, 11 straight, like they might be fighting for the playing spots. And that's not a spot you want a new team that's figuring each other out to be in. So 
that's what I think. I don't know if you guys have different opinions on the trade or if you think there was a clear winner or loser, please let me know in the comments. Give me your thoughts. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I will be back soon.